so i guess like everyone uh, we can start with the event so hello everyone welcome to another of our weekly events where we will discuss about a plethora of events ranging from metaverse gaming quantum computing space and what not we are honored to have mr anurag kurana the founder and ceo of peta esports and formal country manager at riot games to help us and our audience with his insights with over 22 years of experience in business consulting project management system design integration and game development over 13 years of experience in gaming industry development head of games on more than 5 platforms we are once again honored to have you here let us start the session with some questions we have cultured thanks thanks for inviting me pranay uh, good uh, good evening uh, uh, we are really glad to have you here so before we start like i would love to tell you about start now how we came up with this idea and what is our ideology behind it so basically when we were in school we faced a lot of issues regarding startups like we always wished to start something we had an idea but we never knew how exactly we are going to proceed with it like we never had exactly a mentor in our schools basically our school life was more focused towards our academics so at start now our focus is providing mentors to the young entrepreneurs and the budding minds of the country and make india a startup hub we provide guidance to all the people who are willing to start their come to their ventures so that they can also get success and do not face the problems that we faced in our initial days so that is the ideology behind startup and now i would love to open the stage for questions so good afternoon sir um my first question to you like can you please exp- uh, tell us about your journey in startups and your experience in gaming related industries sure so i am uh, so as you mentioned the issue you are trying to solve imagine back in early 90s what was the scene with us just passing out of 12 so great initiative uh, to begin with that's my first uh, comment secondly i uh, did my graduation as a bachelor of science from uh, punjab university in chandigarh i passed out on 94 94 i started uh, working in a consulting company but in a year or two i realized that it was not easy for a guy of 25 years of age telling double the age people 50 year old people what to do in the career or what to do with their projects so i quit uh, consulting in two years and started my own uh, system integration company but a time came in 99 i was trying to move to us uh, to join a company and uh, being the only child my father kind of co-host twins and said do what you want to do and i will support you that's how i got into gaming in 99 uh, 99 we started a company called netlinium technologies along with my partner anuj where uh, the idea was to build web based uh, multiplayer uh, gaming uh, product where if you i don't know you guys were born also at that time or not so sorry for my ignorance but at that time if you uh, would have read somewhere that to play m- games on uh, internet you need to know the ip of the other guy so we created a tool where automatically person would create a server uh, on his uh, side and other people can join him so that was the product we had created but in 2001 our company was acquired by reliance uh, infocom and the company was uh, renamed to paradox studios which i was lucky to be a ceo and a founder of that company at age of 26 uh, which is a feather in my cap for sure till 2007 we created uh, games for mobile web based and we did uh, three uh, pc based games also back then funny part is that was the initial part of what today is called as play store or apple store that was the product that alliance has created at that time which were called alliance application platform on which people can browse through find the games and download the games the funny part is that at that time we used to get 400000 downloads a day which is even by today's standard quite a good number in 2007 i joined another company called uh, red octane which was part of activision group and they had a product called guitar hero which was basically a guitar uh, based uh, controller where you would play the uh, it was a console game so you would play the uh, chords based on what comes on that and uh, that was a great product then for a decade i took a sabbatical from gaming industry and i was working in uh, Smart City projects, but uh, 2017, yeah, 2017, I got a chance to join the gaming industry back as head of uh, Riot Games India. 20 next year, I was head of esports for 
Geo. After that, uh, I did a couple of uh, projects as a consultant for Paytm First Games and a Singapore-based platform called ESPL. And uh, last year, Jan, we started our own company. Where the the problem we identified was there was nothing happening at the grassroots level for esports. So, with the focus on grassroots, we started a company called Penta Esports with the brand being uh, New Gen Gaming and the brand being uh, Penta Esports. So that's my 25-year-old journey in five minutes. That is really great to know about you, sir. So, once you have some questions to for sir, can you ask? Hi, hi, sir. Um, so I had a few questions related to the gaming industry. So the main question that I had was like uh, a few years from now, five to six years. But do you see uh, the gaming industry? Like, how do you see the gaming industry? Like initially, it was PSPs, then PlayStation's game, then Xbox game, and now it is a whole metaverse thing going going on. So, how do you think with the advent of metaverse, uh, how will the gaming industry go in future? And we, as the current generation that will be going to build it, how can we capitalize on this on this moment and how can we scale it uh, to to gain something? Okay, once uh, my take is very different because if you see ninety nine, I was the third person in the country to get into gaming, but gaming really boomed when mobile as a device became uh, popular in India, and that's where the 95 or 96 percent of gaming today happens yes number two platform is pcs but and consoles really doesn't exist in the country of course there are some consoles but number of consoles vis-a-vis -vis pcs is very small and vis-a-vis -vis mobile it's only a fraction of uh, the number so gaming in india is definitely gonna be around mobile if you want to talk mass market yes there is gonna be pc gaming but uh, it's it's gonna be a little bit of elite class who will be playing pc games and not the common man with metaverse uh, since you mentioned metaverse the funny thing is metaverse is not a new concept it's just that Facebook has changed the name of the company and Mark is talking about uh, Metaverse. That's why Metaverse has become a hip uh, term to be used. But Metaverse existed uh, since 99s. If uh, you guys would have read about a game called Second Life, which was nothing but what today's Metaverse is. I used to play that game for 8 hours, 9 hours and it was not a game. It was basically an alternate uh, way of living. So that's my take on it. But with the new advent of technologies with internet becoming accessible to every home high speed internet not just internet i think the things will change but what how metaverse will actually look like five years from now i can't predict because it has been there since 99 in one way or the other okay sir nice to know about that sir uh, the next question was like um, there are there are many business models surrounding gaming industry so my question was like in your business uh, what exactly is your model of earning the earning the money through through gaming and uh, some other models that that could be that could uh, that the people here could use if they want to go into the gaming industry if so the, we 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 are actually not a gaming company right now we are a esports company where basically we use computer games to do sports tournaments that's that's what we do so for us it's miss mainly sponsorship which is our source of revenue but talking of uh, gaming uh, revenues, I think before uh, in mid 90s or early 2000s, advertisement was the only way of uh, making money. There was nothing called in-app purchase back then, and of course, it was either free freemium uh, free games which were supported by advertisements, or there used to be a paid games where you need to pay 50 rupees, 100 rupees to buy the game. But with the new model of in-app uh, purchases, which is freemium games that you get the game for free but for cosmetics or enhancement for your game you can invest money and get that in an easy way i think that is the model which is uh, working which is working very good in india and especially because of two companies i would say this model has become very popular one is geo bringing the 4g to the common man and second is paytm because companies like paytm because right now you could just load 100 rupees in your wallet and spend that money for microtransactions. So I think that is where the model has moved uh, from uh, freemium games or ad adware games in big to begin with in 99s to today where it's mainly uh, uh, freemium games. Okay, sir. Nice. Great to know. Like, uh, th thanks. Thank you for contributing your time, I guess. My pleasure. So I guess India actually have some question. 
these guys requested me to come to their homes and i said why why do you want me to come to your home you have not even joined yet they said no we want you to talk to our parents and convince them that we are actually going to work in a game development company so i am coming from that period to the extent uh, lot of my colleagues were not getting married because we used to call ourselves as a indian game developer so we changed the tagline of a company to indian uh, to uh, entertainment software development and suddenly they were getting uh, proposals because software development was a big buzzword in early 2000s yeah. not game development so yeah i am coming from that period but i think things have uh, changed right now like i have seen lot of kids who take pride and their parents who take pride that their kids are working in the game development industry so things have changed a lot in last two decades man i really relate to this because i am also from the same industry before gaming industry was a word So, yeah exactly exactly i i like, didn't really relate to this thing yeah because I, we were the third company in 99 to get into game development yeah you, one was that, one was my yeah number. yeah one was my dear close friend vishal gondal who started india games before yeah, yeah, that I mean. there was a guy called rajesh rao who started druva and i started the third company and funny part was we all three were working in different uh, platforms rajesh was basically doing outsource work for uh, sony and uh, microsoft yeah. uh, india games was doing uh, pc based games and we were doing web based games that's how we started of course then me and uh, vishal both moved into mobile gaming in uh, early 2000s so yeah is there any game like we might have came across or played one of your game like i used to play a lot of web games back then like free online games mini clip like like that, uh-huh, those okay. games so, so. Uh, we basically uh, we had launched a game uh, games on our uh, website called uh, passion for games in 99 but i don't know whether you were born at that time or not just one year after i was born uh, okay so <laughs> that that explains <laughs> so yeah but we That's, also I did was a always into gaming <laughs> sure 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 so one more uh, couple of games we did we did a pc based game called battle of the championship in 2004 2005 we did a game called bomber babe those both for pc based games and of course on mobile we had lot of games uh, back then i would say 80% of the games on uh, Reliance uh, Infocom back then in uh, early 2000s was all developed by my studio only. Yeah. So basically, okay. So at that time, people did not know like gaming can be a future. Like people still might not know. But after 2019, after IGDC happened and a lot of events happened, uh, perception of Indian game industry changed forever. Hmm. Uh, after 2019, that was there uh, when a lot of events were happening. Like Epic Games was investing. Tapping in yeah. certain investment from uh, ten cent, and a lot of those stuff began to happen. Like indie became upfront. Yes, yes, yeah. I so, completely agree with you. Go ahead. So now, like in our company, we have thirteen layered revenue model, mm-hmm. and back when you were you were creating the game, you were creating web based game. There were not a lot of uh, revenue models. Like you can only earn from ads, or you can only sell the game. Like Are no investment, no anything. So Trust how me. did you manage to? <laughs> so we we were basically being driven from our passion. We were not running as a business uh, entity back in two thousand twenty nine, two thousand nineteen ninety nine because we were just passionate about gaming. That's how we were a bunch of fourteen people who joined together and started developing games. So that's the issue with no business model, nothing in place because there was no business model per se in terms of gaming in India. There was no business model per back then. I think only business model was with my friend Rajesh because he was down doing outsourcing work. So Microsoft would come with a project to him, give him work, and he would earn money. That was the only thing. But I think where Vishal brought in the first business model where he started working with Adwar Gaming. I don't know whether you are aware of that or not, but he released uh, two PC games. One was uh, uh, Yoda, in which it was Pepsi was the sponsor of uh, that game. and the health portions were pepsi cans so that yeah. that's how he got business model in of course since we though we started in 99 in 2001 we were inquired by reliance infocom so we also developed a business model that 
per download, Reliance was paying us money. So that's how we were earning money at uh, back then. That's actually cool. I actually know the name of that game, Yodha, because uh, in 2021, we also revealed our game and it's also named Yodha. Oh, nice. Very yeah. nice. Very <laughs> nice. Very nice. Yeah. So how are... How are you dealing with investments? Like, do you, have you raised investments, or are you willing to raise, or something like that? So, at uh, Penta Esports, we are in the process of raising the investments. I think mm-hmm. by next month we'll officially announce the investment that we've raised. That is actually cool. Like beginning new financial year and the new year yeah. era on the gaming industry. Like we yeah. are also announcing investments next month. <laughs> okay, nice. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. So basically, new era of gaming industry has officially begun. We can say right, with the podcast. No, I like, think I, I don't think so. That new era. Only thing is, right now, I'll be up and frank with you guys. Yeah, right now, Web three, NFTs, crypto is such a buzzword because of FOMO. Every VC is investing in the country, but how that business model will actually become, n- nobody is very clear. People have great ideas, but will that ideas will be converted into reality? Even I'm skeptical about that. That's why another issue. But there are a lot of studios who are doing great work like Nordic Game, uh, Super Gaming, uh, Encore, Dot Nine. These guys are doing some great uh, kick-ass work uh, in traditional gaming. The new set of what we call as uh, play-to-earn games. I'm yet to see a great product out there, but it... As a concept, it shows a lot of potential. Yeah. Well, so you, you are mostly working in Unity, right? No, we do, we are not into game development right I mean, now. When, when you were working? No, there was nothing called Unity back then. Yeah. It was in 2006, actually. Yeah, it was. I left gaming industry in 2006 for a decade. Oh. So there was nothing called Unity. Though I know <laughs> Unity very well because then my dear friend... Yeah, my dear friend uh, Quinton uh, was uh, heading uh, Unity in India. So... That's a different story. I know about Unity, but back then there was nothing called Unity. So for PC gaming, we were using an engine called A5 and mm-hmm. uh, Lith, uh, Lith Tech. We also worked in uh, 2004 or 5 on uh, Unreal Engine back then. That was for PC gaming. For mobile, we used to develop our own engine. There was nothing called even an engine for a mobile game back then. Yeah, because there were no mobiles at that time. So No, mobiles were there, but it was mainly being uh, using technology like uh, J2ME or Symbian. These were the two yeah. technologies which are very popular in India. Symbian mm-hmm. basically for uh, 360s uh, handsets and Java for J2ME for all other handsets. So this was the gaming industry. Like, so now let's go to esports. Like esports are currently becoming mainstream. Yes. So what do you think? Like, what's your take on esports and what is the ultimate goal of esports? I think as you rightly said, esports is uh, going mainstream. But if you really ask my opinion esports in india has not even touched the tip of the iceberg for a very simple reason yeah if you see esports as a term is just 10 year old uh, on the west also i was lucky enough to work in a company which was part of this whole uh, esports revolution in india which was in world which is riot games and it's courtesy riot and uh, blizzard that esports as a term uh, came out but if you see west it all started as a grassroots event so it was all underground so if you see the pyramid for esports on top it's the pro teams and if you come to the bottom layer it's the amateur or the grassroots events so unfortunately in india the whole thing started with the on the top that there were a couple of pro teams who came out and then there were tournaments around those teams that is the unfortunate part because the growth of esports has not been to the potential in India that is expected because there was no work at the grassroots level. That's where we started the company called Penta Esports, which is purely working at the grassroots level of esports. So with that being said, yes, we have a long way to go. But because if you see even in India, even the government doesn't recognize esports as a like any other sports today. But I think that should change very soon. Once that happens, I think the evils that are associated with gaming, that would go out because trust me, our parents are more worried what their kids are doing on the phones all day long. And I agree on their side also because though I'm a gamer since 1986, I've been playing games, but even my wife doesn't allow my kid to play more than two hours. He's an eight year old son. So I think those kind of animations will go out of the window once government recognize esports as a traditional sport 
we have uh, esports as part of the curriculum in schools and colleges i think that's where the whole situation for esports in india would change gaming gaming is good but oh, we should we should play game but not over the limit no that's that's what even our message yeah. is uh, right now gaming is good if done in moderation yeah it is a good entertainment medium it's yep. for for like mental development and everything exactly yeah that was really great conversation um now before i move ahead uh, i would like to announce it to everyone since it is an interaction event uh, so audience in case if you want to ask any question or want to interact with our guest you can just leave your uh, name in the event chat section so that we can queue you like so next is ankit so ankit you can proceed with the question good evening mr anurag i'm ankit and i have a few questions to ask you regarding the gaming industry hey ankit go ahead yeah uh, so first of all like i heard about your interaction with harshit over here we talked about how the prism is a par- paradigm shift basically uh, uh, for the gaming industry in which pe- parents are not allowing their kids to play games or thinking it might be hindrance the career mm-hmm. but the thing is that ki there's a new shift towards web3 metaverse and yeah. how the gaming industry actively engage with the metaverse because everything is moving towards decentralization and in that scope how big would the gaming industry become or let's say it might decline also as well so what I is your take on that i think decline will never happen trust me the since 99 mm-hmm. since i've been observing gaming industry even before 99 99 is when i entered gaming industry even before that i have been observing gaming industry as a player because the beauty of the gaming industry is no it's a recession proof industry if there's a recession actually the revenue for gaming increases always so it's never going to go down it is always going to go up only but my my uh, mm. problem ankit is i would ask you a question if you can answer what is your definition of metaverse because i have asked this question to 10 people and when i talk to 10 people i get eight different definitions so i would say that uh, essentially metaverse is a network of many 3d virtual worlds that is mainly focused towards social connection mm-hmm. so that is a gist of what metaverse actually is so, so that you way, are basically you are trying to tell me it's a facebook in 3d world am i right no not exactly facebook in 3d, 3D okay. world but it's like uh it's it's more apart from facebook so <laughs> no no i i agree but just explaining to a common man as this the social network facebook is my go to social network i am old so yeah i i am not a guy who i though i am on instagram i am not very active on instagram or on the snapchat so for me i am still a guy from facebook generation so yeah so it's basically social network in 3d that's what your definition of metaverse is am i right correct correct Where does gaming fit into that? <laughs> gaming has many aspects to it because uh, I would say that uh, since it's, it's a social network, so gaming essentially is a kind of social network if you consider. Uh, sure. No, no, I agree. Network. Gaming is the biggest social network, yar. I, I am totally with you. I am not denying. But okay, so gaming is gonna be a part of metaverse. It's not the metaverse. Okay, fine. That's Wait. that's what I was reading out to that that gaming would be part of metaverse, but gaming never will be the metaverse. So of course, as metaverse increases, but as metaverse grows, so dependency of gaming would be there on metaverse because there are lot of technical technical challenges need to be worked out. In my opinion, yes, you need a VR uh, headset, but trust me, mm-hmm. today's headsets you can't wear more than thirty minutes. You will start getting dizzy. Till mm-hmm. the size of those VR headsets becomes like your glasses, normal glasses that you wear, it's not gonna mm-hmm. become a mass market product. of course those are the aspects we need to work on trust me gamers are smart man game developers are smarter they'll figure out products around the metaverse but first the metaverse need to exist correct right uh, one thing uh, like to add that since you're saying that gaming according to gaming will definitely increase with the scope of metaverse yeah how would it uh, replace traditional social conversations because uh, one thing is that metaverse is social community and game gaming is actively engaging with it but don't you believe that the virtual environment might not be as fruitful as compared to the real environment because there are many aspects to real environment say for example i was not a gamer when i was a kid and currently i'm 21 mm-hmm. so i used to always go out and all that and all these games like the ones that people play nowadays when they are 7 or 8 i discovered them when i was 15 so according to me for me when i was a kid the real world was a more fruitful experience but yeah. nowadays the virtual world is actively being seen as 
the better version mm. better alternative compared to the real world sure. how will it affect people in general say for example if you're taking a market uh, we're taking a, a, fu- a future of let's say 20 30 years because in that time definitely we'll all be middle aged and old and all but the next generation they will be act- they will be having uh, all sorts of conversations on the virtual platform so how will it affect people overall? i don't think so yaar we need to worry about that part because if you look at traditionally anything you need to buy you had to go out today Correct. you are so dependent on amazon i'm talking about the electronic goods or stuff you buy of course grosses are tracked are still happening from traditional place but even that is changing so i don't think that that changes for good that changes for the dynamics of the society so i i am not worried about uh, that aspect and i totally agree with you my 8 year old kid would but there there are couple of kids in the colony only but they would fix up time maybe go to the park and play roblox there in the park on their devices but that is what they are more comfortable and that's their new form of entertainment for them so i i i i i, I don't see a hindrance in that uh, phenomenon Her, yes his mother does i am telling you his mother does not be acha that, that that is definitely nice yeah. yeah i would like the uh, next person over here to ask questions right yeah. chicken talk about so i guess like we should call audience now talk yes. so i've invited someone um so yes uh, you can go ahead hello sir uh, thank you uh, i'm really honored for having a conversation with you so i want to know about your take on online web games which are becoming popularized uh, nowadays like we see scribble smash card and many yeah. other online which uh, we just search on the room and like click on the link and we are good to go we do not need any uh, game to be downloaded exactly so uh, sir what do you see these uh, online web games after 5 years like uh, will they scale or may decline i think uh, they will scale only yaar because i remember because that was my first product in 99 games like uh, scrabble ludo snakes and ladder that's what i started developing in 99 on web based platform but if you look at the adoption rate today the people what we call as uh, daily active users or monthly active users for those games that number has exploded and as you said the beauty of these games is you don't need to download the software you could play it from any device in variable whether the game is installed or on that or not so i am totally with you and i completely agree the only the scale would increase and especially with the new devices being so powerful that a game could be developed in unity and could be running on uh, as a web based game so i think the this whole phenomenon is going to increase because i remember the games which were built in the native uh, form back in mid 2000 today they can be developed as a web uh, game because of the powerful of the software like unity etc and the power at the device also to process it so in my opinion this is going to uh, increase only uh so i think like if your question is a uh, complete so can we call next or do you have any other thing so i think we should call next person um, hello hello am i audible yes you are yes please hi so i am an avid gamer i have been playing for uh, uh, more than 8 years almost 10 years oh wow okay and uh, what i have been seeing is i prefer to play triple a game uh, the ones made by ubisoft rockstar uh-huh. those kind and i don't play mobile games at all that's okay so by the way let me just first interrupt you which are your favorite games here so yeah i can get the context right <laughs> so uh, the mobile games these days first of all they are uh, i seen triple a games the story games they are about mm. the story they are about the experience sure so it's like a movie or a book yeah. but you are in the story mm. and in these mobile games the also the e-sport games or uh, that is not there so i think that is an experience they are missing out on but the companies are promoting that because of the huge potential for revenue in that so what's your thought on that i think uh, you are 100% right uh, to an extent of course the only reason why mobile games have become so popular in the country is because availability of mobile as a device if you want to buy a pc you got a, a decent or a good pc you got to invest a lakh of rupees in it okay especially for when you talk about the games you like playing but if you want to enjoy games on mobile you need a investment of 25000 so of course the base is huge number 2 today's youth need a mobile anyways just for communication so mobile is not a device only for playing games so even the 
parents are okay investing that uh, much money for their kids third part which i slightly disagree with you that you can't have uh, story based games on mobile of course it's not the same experience just because of the size of the screen and uh, the memory of the screen and other stuff but for a gamer I, like i have been a pc gamer since 1996 okay but today because of the shortage of time because mobile games are generally short burst games 10 minute 15 minutes that's the time you need to play a game or at least have entertainment on that uh, game but if you remember pc i my favorite game is a game by the name of path of exile it's a rpg i've been playing for last 4 years the only problem is if i start playing a path of exile i need to invest at least 6 hours in one session whereas on on, in mo- on mobile i can be done in 20 minutes uh, my entertainment second point you made about esports i don't agree with you i think if you look at especially even not just india even if you look at west there are just three pc titles or maybe four pc titles which are considered esports on mobile there are eight or 10 pc titles which are still considered uh, esports uh, ready so i don't agree on that part that uh, the mobile doesn't uh, sport uh, esports to the extent if you look at lot of classical pc publishers even they are moving to mobiles with their product you know right right has a brilliant uh, game on uh, pc called league of legends they have already released a mobile version of called wild rift they right now they have a brilliant title called valorant they have already announced valorant mobile also so i think it is not true that only only games on uh, pc can be esports ready even the games on mobile can be esports ready it depends on the publisher how they build the dynamics or they do the game design i don't think that the platform is the problem the thing is about uh, esports on mobile the companies like riot and all they are just pushing it out because of the revenue no i uh, don't agree because i have worked at riot at least on riot side i am telling you riot is very clear if the game is not good they will never release it i don't know specifically about riot no i am telling you about riot because i have worked in that company so i can share with you riot had uh, was ready with a game release i think in 6 years back but just because a computer released the same game and there was nothing different in the right game that the computer game right kind that project they never released that game and it took them 8 years to come up with the first mobile title the first mobile title for right is actually league of legends which is wild rift till 8 years they didn't come up with any mobile title because they were not convinced not that they were not doing development they were doing development meant but they were not convinced that this game is good enough the users will uh, the players will enjoy it because riot is a company who truly believes in player first experience that is actually cool otherwise other there will be one more cyberpunk disaster there exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly ashish yeah or in india forge disaster yep yep i know of uh, professional players who spend 8 hours uh, continuously to grind on uh, their uh, bgmi but those are exceptions man hmm. basically there is one limit in mobile there's a hardware hmm. limit we cannot make a game that is as beautiful as compared to a pc game exactly 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 that's why we cannot make great games yeah. on mobile we great game for mobile which means when i'm saying as compared to computers of course but there's a difference also na that device is for 25000 and computer is for 1 lakh so that one lakh device will have that much power yeah like a cheapest graphic card where we can find that cost 25000 exactly that's <laughs> minimum that's that anti level graphic yes. card yaar today graphic cards cost 1 lakh plus <laughs> yeah yeah that, that that's the problem with games and yeah. even if you, you you make a high end device like uh, like the power entire power of universe in the one mobile phone even that then that's going to be a bulky phone like if you sure. hit it to someone's head it's going to faint Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah. So yeah. have you have you tried those NES games? Sorry, NES games like nine 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 in one. Oh yeah, yeah, that uh, Nintendo. Uh, yeah, Nintendo 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 Nintendo. Nintendo. Of course, yeah, of course, of course. Mm-hmm. Though I never had a Nintendo system at my place before uh, GBS etc. So I used to play. Even today, I play them on my PC emulators. I still enjoy playing those games. Yeah. So like now, when somebody is creating a game. people have to think like after 10 years of the release people should feel nostalgic about that game true 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 i completely agree 
my favorite game i can admit on this platform one game which i cried while playing was a game called final fantasy 7 oh final okay fantasy. yeah that would i i think the name of that character was aries when she died and there was no way you could uh, save that girl from dying so when she died matlab i could i i could see my tears rolling now that's called creating an art form fun you know why final fantasy game is on that level like no other game could achieve hmm. like the, the final fantasy level that is because and the, the name that is just because that studio was about to be closed because they have published uh, several bad games and it was the final game for them so they were like we want to create a game which is our fantasy we are going to make the best game that we could ever make hmm. so they made final fantasy and the name is final because they wanted to close studio after that but that game was ultimate success True. like they they all gave their best because they had nothing nothing to lose at yeah. that time yeah uh, so it was a game by the original company was square Sorry. then they merged with a company called enix and that's how it became square enix so i think uh, neil have some questions related yes, to please. gaming related startups so can you ask like you can ask yes please neil mm. what do you think about hackers like how can we eliminate them like, sorry neil i uh, i, uh, I you used to play i yeah. used to play csgo a lot but after after like there are so many hackers and even in gta 5 there are so yeah. many hackers it no. just ruins the user experience of i know man i i completely agree with you and trust me we can't do anything even publishers are not able or the developers are not able to control those hackers so that that is the reason of a death of a game if you remember i don't know whether you played apex uh, legends or not you in apex to- legends season 1 there were so many hackers that's the only reason why the game died on uh, its natural death of course they are trying to revive it as apex legends uh, mobile also now but that is the reason of downfall of any great game is the hackers because they come and ruin the experience for other i still play apex legends uh, i don't uh, but they have actually improved the hacking system yes they have they have yeah. yes but csgo and gta 5 haven't like just taken a step or so yeah. so you are playing a multiplayer game hackers can hack it in real experience but whenever you are playing a non competitive game hackers mm. can boost up the experience uh, like it depends modding yeah. and everything no modding is again modding is different than hacking hacking is basically to destroy the experience whereas modding is to improve the experience so i think one has some question so one you can go ahead okay so uh, basically sir uh, in the re- in the past few few months we had seen a lot of growth in the crypto based games and a lot of people were earning a lot from it and uh, even the developers with the help of their coin value have reached a, a great amount of money so yeah. how do you think is it is it uh, feasible in future and if we link game with metaverse with crypto with nfts all of this like all of these decentralized uh, things that are going on do, does it lead us to a future uh, with metaverse nfts and all of that yeah i completely agree like play to earn games they have actually good model now there's another model which is coming around the guilds where basically people invest in buying the character and then they give it to other people to play and they split the profit so it's a good model but i don't know whether that model will be very successful in india or not because if you see this model x infinity etc are very popular in southeast asia where population is very less so that has made sense but in a country like india where population is so huge i am not very sure whether this would become a great model to work on but as a concept i truly buy that model and especially i am a big fan of nfts but till date i have not been able to figure out how nfts could really integrate into gaming system and how because nfts if you look is more out of speculation value there is no real value it's more about sex speculation value and because it's a limited edition uh, item so i am still not able to figure out the business model behind it but i am all uh, game for nft sir uh, we can actually, do this like we, we have sir. actually figured it out and in our games we have been in, working to integrate nfts mm-hmm. in our games it's called life on fire 
and we are integrating a lot of NFT space like in gun skins and a lot of like we have a completely a different blockchain there. Okay. Just for that. Nice. Sir, in a commercial point of view, suppose there are um, a ten numbers of games going on. Okay, so there are characters including in in each game. So for each character that you buy in one game, you buy an NFT related to that that identifies that this character is yours. You can use that NFTs in those ten games, and you can build that character uh, upon different universes, different dimensions that you create. So, okay. is it possible in future? Yeah, like, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. scales. Uh, the the biggest problem you brought the right point the biggest problem is if it's a game by a single publisher i see a possibility of that but if it's you are talking about generic like a game from riot trust me will not work with a game from uh, wolf because those are competing companies but and again also as far as the avatar is concerned the avatar logo that can be common but since like you look at Riot only, game like Valorant which is 5v5 and a game like Wild Rift which is uh, uh, Boba, you really can't take one character from one game to another game. So th- there's a lot of work to be done. Of course, if it is not from the same, uh, same publisher or developer, I don't see that commercially being possible to use your character from one game to another. Even if it is from the same publisher, the issue is because it's going to be a very different game style, game design, the feasibility needs to be worked out. Of course, it's much more easier if it's from the same publisher. I'm sure publisher or developer will be able to figure it out. But for consumer, I don't think it would make sense if the characters are of a different, very different kind because of the genre of the game. Okay, yes, sir. So, sir, basically, do you see like the brands that are coming from 30 years, 20 years? You, you are yourself working in Riot Games. So, do you see that these brands will exist five years or 10 years from now, or like Nokia died one day? <clears throat> so, um, like, there will be new brands coming up with their new psychologies and new generations that are working on metaverse and then crypto NFTs. Do you think that these old brands will coexist or new startups will emerge out? And like yeah. eliminate all those previous. I'm 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 very clear. Yeah. Nokia died because of its. They never evolved. A company which can't evolve, trust me, it will die. If you look at EA, yes, from 1970s, yeah, they were one of the first companies to get into gaming, and today also EA is there. Riot. What I was surprised, especially at Riot, was that for 10 years the company survived on one game called League of Legends. Where they did a turnover, I think two years or three years, sorry, five years back. Sorry, I forgot that. I left Riot four years back. So five years back, they did a turnover of $1 billion by just selling in-app items. So I think any company which evolves with the time will survive. But any company who thinks that this is my product and I will, this product will be success. And when it doesn't become, it doesn't move its uh, product, they will die. Like Nokia did. Nokia saw it on the wall that Series 60 is dying. They have to move to Android. The whole uh, industry is moving towards Android. But they took a call. No, no. Our uh, Symbian is the best. We'll stick with it. You know what happened to Nokia. So I think it's more to do with the company, not to do with whether it's an old or new one. So, like, um, if if suppose if uh, if the growth for a big brand to like make uh, piv- the, to pivot its way around, like from from whatever from whatever goes on in the industry, won't it be tough? Like, even in those small spaces, there will be new startups emerging. Some will fail, some will some will not fail. But for big businesses, they have to sustain, they have to maintain the profit model. So, will they be able to explain to channelize through these narrow networks rather than like staying where they are? So I am very clear, yeah. If a company can't move in the new environment, that will die, no matter big or small, new or old. Even that's true for new companies, yeah. If a new company comes with a great product, but within a year, the whole marketing dynamics change. There's no need for that product. If the company doesn't come with a new, one more new product, that's gonna die. Same is true for a old company with a big uh, thing. Uh, but I agree with you, the bigger the company, the more non-agile it is. They will take time to move. So that's the reason for death of these companies than rather than anything else. 
they have the people who can innovate but does the top management really accept that innovation that is the critical part okay sir okay thank you one for asking so i think we have an audience question uh, it is from sahil so sir it is like he is asking how the indian government can amend its policy leaning towards gaming industry's growth in order to increase its revenue which generated by the industry because in 2020 we were having only 1.9 billion dollars in revenue from the gaming industry but how can our government can help us in increasing the growth of this industry so i am very clear here yeah. the the farther the government stays away from it the better it will be for business because if you see what has been policy change for software industry for last 40 50 years but if you see software industry has increased on its own i think that's how i want government to even handle the gaming industry keep at least arms distance there is nothing that government can increase the growth of the industry matlab i don't want shops for the gaming industry for people to just come and uh, let's not discuss it any further but i would my personal opinion is we don't need anything from government rather than just just make sure you define gaming my biggest problem is today most of the gambling companies are treated as gaming companies or that is the biggest issue i face which should not be the case. okay thank you sir thank you so much sir it was a really great and informative session we really enjoy it but since you are a such a busy person and we only asked you for one hour and i think we have uh, like we have exceeded the time limit so it is the time you off now it was really great talk it was and we really expect to meet you like to have a conversation with you on a, once again in the future and in the end i would just like to ask you how you liked our idea of start now and how the overall con- experience of the con- so thanks a lot for having me here guys but i am very clear if this existed in my when i was in just out of the school i would have been a different guy so great initiative any time you need any help you know where to find me just any time you want me to be here talk to you guys i am always going to be available thanks a lot sir uh, it was really lovely thank you so much sir thank All you thank you. bye